two more books come out at the conclusion of the Faceless Man arc of the Rivers of London series. And one of the my viewers asked me on Tumblr in the comments what my thoughts were on those two books. Well, since I have read them and I've done prose reviews on those, um, I very should give my thoughts on them here as well. It seems only appropriate and appropriate. Now, there will be some major spoilers for books one through seven and some minor spoilers for books eight through nine. Books eight and nine, well, titled False Value and Amongst Our Weapons, don't exactly have the same recurring looming antagonist that the first seven books did, either directly or acting from the shadows. Yes, Leslie May is still in the breeze after she offed the faceless man, but she's also not aspiring to be the same kind of magical Moriarty the faceless man was. She's more of a magical gun for hire, taking on jobs that for, for various other people in the Demimonde and not just doing jobs in the UK. This all kind of ties into the main thrust of these books, to flesh out the areas around the edges of the map, of the setting. The first seven books had a very strong focus on British magic, both in the present and the past. While we've had occasional steps abroad with the introduction of the Russian magical night witches in one of the earlier books, but this is all through the context of the experiences of Nightingale and his, albeit, limited perspective on magic outside the UK. By contrast, false value and amongst our weapons start making significant steps towards fleshing out more of the magical community in the US, Spain, and France, both in the present and historically, as well as delving more into the Sons of Wayland, the group who came up frequently in the earlier books as the foremost magical craftspeople of the British community before everything went to crap at Edinburgh. Much of this headway information ultimately ends up coming through the direct research of Peter with some assistance from the Follies archivist, Harold Postmartin. Part of the reason for the shift feels like it's born a bit out of Ben Aronovich having expanded the cast through the introduction of a lot more other characters, whether they're apprentice, apprentice sor sorceresses, sorcerers, like Abigail Kamara, or members of the Met with magical and magical adjacent training, like Sarah Galid. And while Peter is still in an active investigative role in both of these books, complete with going undercover for an extended period in False Value, he's also been actively involved in developing training materials for Falcon, that is, with Bullock's certification for agents in the Met, with the clear implication being that he, going forward, is not necessarily going to be the only person working these kinds of cases. Now, both books set up candidates for recurring antagonists, but the setup antagonist from False Value, as far as a recurring figure, doesn't make a return in Amongst Our Weapons. And I haven't read enough of the novellas to really say if the also set up antagonist from um, Amongst Our Weapons, as far as the one working behind the scenes has really shown up anywhere else in those works either. So it feels like Aronovich hasn't thought up a long-term payoff for any of this setup as yet. Assuming the payoff isn't meant to be for the Rivers of London officially licensed tabletop came from Chaosium in terms of him doing the world, doing additional world building and fleshing things out um, with that game in mind. In all, book nine ends in a place where I legit don't know where things are going next. And I'm really excited to see how that plays out in future works. As always, links to where you can pick up those books we found in the doobly-doo. And buying anything through those links helps to support the show. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, it costs me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 